Welcome to SolarWinds Remote Monitoring and Management, which includes an Integrated Endpoint Detection and Response Feature, or EDR, powered by Sentinel-1. Today, we'll show you how to set up and use integrated EDR in RMM. We'll show you how to activate your 30-day trial and get started with integrated EDR. This process relies on our new ecosystem management framework and enables direct trial activation in product. There are three simple steps we'll cover to get you up and running. First, activate your trial. Next, create an EDR policy. And finally, enable the EDR feature on an endpoint. Step one, enable EDR in the left-hand navigation menu. Click Integrations, Integration Management menu. Next, in the Endpoint Detection and Response row, click Activate. This activation process may take up to 10 minutes to complete. After successful activation, you will see your trial active with number of days remaining. You will then also see the new endpoint detection and response menu in the left-hand navigation and be ready to go. The next thing to do after successful activation is to create policies that define the protection levels and other configuration settings for how endpoints will be protected. Click the Add Policy button on the Policies page to get started. After naming and providing a description of the policy and clicking Save, you will then see the Edit Policy screen. If you want to make changes to the policy, click the Change Policy link, which will enable editing of all the policy options. Be sure to scroll down to verify all available options, and after you have configured them to your needs, click the Save button located at the bottom of the iframe to ensure the changes are successfully recorded for the policy. During this step, you can also configure the blacklist and exclusion options at the top level tabs of the edit policy screen to enable finely tuned control of threat detections in your network. After the Sentinel-1 policy and any blacklist or exclusions are saved, remember to click the finish button in the lower right hand corner to exit the policy creation process. The final step is enablement of the EDR feature on a workstation or server and can be accomplished in one of two ways. Directly for the individual endpoint under the Edit Workstation or Edit Server menu, you can turn the setting to On and select the policy you want to use. Alternatively, you can use the EDR Settings menu to deploy to various levels of your client tree. Upon successful installation of the EDR feature and agent on the endpoint, the final step is to reboot the system to enable full protection. This can be done immediately or during a regular maintenance window as conditions require. The system is protected as soon as the agent has been installed and retrieves its policy settings from the cloud. However, the dynamic engine is not enabled until after successful reboot to allow the kernel level protections needed for that engine. After enabling EDR on some endpoints, it's time to check the RMM dashboard for the status of the install and monitor the processes. We've added a north pane column and icon for EDR, which indicates the feature status of the endpoint. You will also see two new checks added for devices that have EDR enabled. One of them is a Windows service status check to ensure the agent process is running. And the second is a script check that provides status information about the health of the endpoint from the agent's perspective. The most important data returned by the check is the infected status, and in most cases, it should be clean. However, when a threat is detected on the endpoint, the status will change to infected, and the script will go into a failed state. When this state change happens, if an email or SMS outage notification is enabled, an alert is sent for rapid notification and triage. Here we see the infected status set to infected. The script has failed and any alerts configured will be sent. Now let's talk about managing your endpoints. On the left-hand navigation menu, the new integrations menu provides access to the Sentinel-1 console for a dashboard view and for managing threat detections through their lifecycle. Moving on, it's time to explore the dashboard. This is the place for viewing the current status on threats and endpoints protected by EDR. All the metrics in the upper section 
for the dashboard are quick filters for drilling into the endpoint or threat conditions indicated by the metric. For example, if you click infected endpoints, you will get a filtered list of endpoints that have an active threat on them. If you select active threats, you will see the list of threats that need immediate investigation. One thing to note about the dashboard screen is that they are a read-only view into the endpoints and the actions list is disabled. However, the actions are available under the policy menu. Of course, we need to know how to analyze incidents. You can see this from the Analyze menu on the left-hand navigation. In this view, you can quickly filter based on many properties of the endpoints or threats to get a quick understanding of the problem and access the advanced protection mitigation actions of kill, quarantine, remediate, or rollback. Each threat also has an incident status that can be managed here as well. And you can manage it through the states of unresolved, in progress and resolved. Next up, policies, which is used to create new policies or manage policy settings on an ongoing basis. Management of endpoint actions as well as exclusion lists for hash, path, and signer identity will be the main reasons you use this screen. Finally, settings is the fastest way to enable the EDR feature on many endpoints at any level of the client tree. You can then either turn it on specifically at the level of the tree or configure it to apply the parent policy in the same way other RMM feature policies are enabled. And that's it. We hope you have enjoyed this look at how to use SolarWinds integrated EDR.